Hey guys, this is Pete on the beat. In this video, I'll give you my top tips on how to do NoFap. And because of some comments I got recently under my previous NoFap video, some people told me that I actually inspired them. I decided to include some personal stuff that may or may not inspire you. So before I start with the whole video, I would like to firstly point a few things out. The first thing that I would like to point out is that I'll actually read an article I just wrote on PeteOnTheBeat.com and I'll discuss each and every part of that article. I'll give you all the things which helped me stay in contract until my addiction faded away. By any means, I don't believe that is the only way of doing things. It's simply how everything started for me and also what I was doing during those four years, okay? And the last thing that I would like to also make here is the fact that I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical advisor, so keep that in mind. Tip one and tip two, they can be used by anyone. Tip three, on the other hand, is more of an optional tip so you can keep that in mind as well so with all that being said guys let's start with tip number one so tip number one is get your grind on or start making things happen when doing NoFap, you probably have 10 times more energy and that much more free time. The best thing you can do in order to succeed is to invest both of them in building the life and the things that you want. Step aside from your wife's current momentum, observe it as a third person, then take your time to figure out what are all of the things that you really want to do. Become aware of who you are and who or what you want to become. Get to know what it takes to become that thing. That will not cause you any trouble because because now you have a lot more clarity about everything. If that is going to help you, you can also think about all of the things that you wanted to achieve as a teenager or even as a kid growing up. Start planning, but most importantly, start making daily steps towards transforming those plans into reality. Only after several weeks, you might become urgent to constantly do and be more. You will start feeling like you're capable of making some awesome things happen, things which seemed too difficult to you before. Do not hesitate, go and do those exact things. Now they will be a lot easier. Knowing you accomplish something small or bigger today is feel like no other. The desire to experience that feel over and over again can give you the power to fight any addiction, including the one to pornography and masturbation. All you have to do after sparking this desire is to keep fueling it. Maybe there is a skill that you want to master or an instrument that you want to learn. Or maybe there is something else like starting a business or writing a blog or gaining knowledge into a specific field that you're interested in. Well, I have good news. Now it's probably the best time to do all of them. So what I'm about to read right now, guys, is basically what I want to make you remember from tip number one. Okay, how you're going to spend your time plays key role. Being constantly involved in things you find very exciting will keep you staying on track. Boredom, on the other hand, has the potential of dragging you back to your old habits. Therefore, I suggest avoiding boring things and boring people or circumstances by any means. Okay, stay away from boredom. Don't follow your passion is what many self-help bestsellers advocate. Even though it started making more sense to me nowadays, I'll probably always believe that as long as it is something positive like art form, craft or certain type of a skill, following your passion may be second to none when it comes to creating order in your life. It definitely worked for me and I also believe it can work for you as well. So right now guys, I'll read some personal stuff that is actually related to tip number one, okay? I've spent a big portion of those four years developing my own signature style in music and scratching or turntablism in general. It was something I craved to do during my whole puberty and probably even before that. And honestly, I felt it was an important part of my life mission and path. Back then, my main source of inspiration to do that thing was coming from the practice of constantly asking myself questions like how the fusion between all of the genres I've listened to as a teenager would sound like. What would happen if all of those producers and turntablists start collaborating with each other? I also knew that the artworks or the covers of those projects have to be perfect representation of the music inside. Basically, it had to be some form of a mixture again. So, okay guys, now it's time to move to tip number two and that is start training or start training more. Hands down, I believe that lifting weights is something which can help anyone to succeed with their NoFap journey. As you probably already know, it boosts the production of endorphins and makes you experience the so-called 
runner's high feel, but it also gives you the pump, which is hell of a benefit in my personal opinion. It gives you positive outlook and sets your whole day for success. I also found that twice a day splits is something that you can use to keep the excitement going throughout the whole day. Believe it or not, you can build a rock solid daily routine around your visitations to the gym. For example, you can go to the gym in the morning and then during the day apply everything from tip number one and then later come back in the evening and train another body part. You can also replace the second session with a nice walk in the local park. By following this regimen, you always have something to look forward to, something that actually makes you feel good instantly. That will help you build momentum quickly and it will also prevent you from derailing from your new lifestyle. When on NoFap, you'll notice that you can exercise more. In fact, you might even feel a certain need to do it like you experience certain need to do it, most likely. Trust me, that is completely normal and everything is going to be perfect as long as you follow a proper diet. That is very important as well. If you do so, if you already have a proper diet, then you will notice that you actually recover and rebuild a lot faster from all of your training sessions. And you also make progress a lot faster. That is probably obvious. Therefore, hitting the weights more frequently may become an essential part of your life. So, okay guys, right now I will show you some inspirational stuff that is related to tip number two and then I will read some personal stuff that is also related to tip number two. The greatest feeling you can get in a gym or the most satisfying feeling you can get in the gym is the pump. Let's say you train your biceps, blood is rushing into your muscles and that's what we call the pump. And it feels different, it feels fantastic. It's as satisfying to me as uh, coming is, you know, as uh, having sex with a woman and coming. In some other interviews, Arnold also openly shares that female presence was something that was definitely inspiring him to work a lot harder when training for a competition, for a bodybuilding competition. No, I never competed as a bodybuilder nor as a physique athlete. Regardless of that, I can definitely relate to what the greatest bodybuilder of all time says. Getting massive pump is one of the best feels I ever experienced. Observing that pump in the mirror when I'm at the gym has some kind of therapeutic properties to me. Because of that, I turned my training into a sacred ritual I never skip. An unconventional way to meditate and to reconnect with myself. And as long as for the female presence, till this day it still makes me push myself harder when I train. In fact, that is how I partly discovered what is to have a muse and how to channel my sexual energy. Right now guys, I'll move to tip number three and that is basically the optional tip I already told you about. I don't I believe that specific tip is the best thing for everyone out there. Okay, so keep that in mind. Tip number three is have sex. No, I do not believe having intimate contacts should be a must for you, nor that is something like a necessity for succeeding with NoFap. In fact, many people out there go through the earliest phases of NoFap, through their first 30 to 90 days without having any sex. More power to them. Yet my own experience reminds me that combining NoFap with celibacy from the very beginning can make things a lot more difficult than they actually are. Based on that and on what I see, I believe there are two groups of people. The ones who can do NoFap without having sex and the others who can't. All you have to do is to be brutally honest about your addiction. Do not underestimate your weaknesses. If your addiction is somehow as heavy as mine was four years ago, then I would say you should probably consider having some sex here and there. On the other hand, you can also try to do an off up without having any intimate contacts and basically see for yourself. If you manage to successfully go throughout the period of time between the first three and six months, then congratulations. I guess you're one of those people who have zero difficulties doing it. But if you relapse then no worries, do not beat yourself up. You gained priceless experience and became aware of what you are truly dealing with. That also means you belong to the same group of people such as me four years ago. In that case I suggest you trying the other option. Believe it or not sex can be one of the most powerful tools to utilize when fighting your addiction to fapping. It can help you to rewire your brain and to start associating that type of pleasure with real intimate contact only. By itself, that will help you going through the earliest and most difficult phases of NoFap 
a lot easier. It will also help you build more mitochondria just in case you're into the biohacking stuff and all of that. No, it is not necessary to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or to have sex with random people. All you need is someone that you really like having sex with, enjoying it like it is above and beyond accordingly to your personal preferences and standards. Make sure the person of your choice inspires you to look forward to the days when you're going to share intimacy with them. That will help drastically. Having pre-scheduled dedicated to sex days makes abstaining from touching yourself on the others a lot easier. See that person once or twice a week, that is more than enough. You really don't want to overindulge in the habit of sex. You simply want to use it as a tool in order to break the chains of your addiction. In other words, to replace the habit of jerking off with one of enjoying real sex with real intimate partner. And now you probably wonder, ain't this going to turn me into a pure sex addict? And the answer is no, actually not at all. No, it won't be necessary for you to have sex that frequently until the rest of your life. It's just something that you're going to use temporarily. After succeeding with NoFap, you will have a lot stronger grip on your whole life. Therefore, you also have a lot stronger and better sex control. There are plenty of things that I understood during my four year and off app journey. One of them is that when on its own the desire for sexual expression can be something completely different than the blind need for orgasms caused by fapping. As human sex is part of who we are and as long as we don't do stupid things like overdoing it and as long as we choose our partners carefully, sex can enhance the quality of our lives. The desire for it can be controlled through sexual transmutation. On the other hand, the porn addiction is something that you can't really control. I don't know about you but me personally I was never able to control that addiction, that need to constantly orgasm. I believe the hard sex drive is something that you want to stimulate and actually maintain. The contaminated by pornography need for orgasms is a sickness, a disease from which you want to heal yourself. And right now guys I'll give you a little bit of food for thought. I found I can channel my sexual energy towards achieving pretty much whatever the fuck I want. I also found that having a muse is something that I can actually use to charge that even more. Porn on the other hand was never able to become my muse. I hope that makes sense. So okay guys, right now I'll share with you how my NoFap journey actually started. Back in 2013, a very kind and attractive lady found me on the internet. After having an online conversation with her, she asked me if I wanted to start dating her and eventually become her intimate partner. Not her boyfriend, but her intimate partner. As long as I can remember, I was 23 or 24 and she was 35 or something like that. Because I found her kindness and whole character very impressive, my response to her question was something like, fuck yeah, why not? Probably because of her maturity, the quality of those so-called dates was incomparable to anything I experienced with my previous partners. To me, it was totally different and kind of a new type of a feel. Completely aware of the fact that fapping was fucking up my erections, I took the decision to cut back on it drastically. So I stopped entirely and for a while the things were really good. Actually the things were perfect. The lady was very busy running a business so we were doing our thing only on specific days. Those were Tuesday, Thursday and on Sunday she was always giving me a long phone call before going to the bed or whatever. After staying on this schedule for close to 3 weeks my interest in pornography massively decreased. It became so weak that I was barely thinking about it and that was something extremely uncommon to me back then. I'm not so sure what the reason was but after a while I made the mistake to fap again. On the next day I had an appointment with the lady I'm talking about and the results of what I did on the previous day were that my erection was extremely weak and I was also not able to maintain it. As I'm sharing all of that stuff with you guys, I believe you should also keep in mind that back then I was popping tribulus pills like a motherfucker. Basically, I was taking a lot of tribulus. So keep that in mind. I felt extremely embarrassed and very, very miserable in that moment. Knowing what the reason was, deep inside me, I was hating myself for the thing I've done on the previous day. Even though I had some similar situations with my previous partners, this one was different. I felt like I really didn't want to miss any parts 
of what was happening back then. That was something very rare actually. In that moment I began to despise pornography and masturbation with passion. I'm not so sure if I can say this. I no longer wanted to be one of those guys who jerks off or watches porn and all of that. I simply wanted to do only the thing that I was doing back then. In that moment I also figured out that that was exactly what I always wanted and I was able to do it so there was really no reason for sacrificing it, okay? I really didn't want to sacrifice or waste that whole thing that was happening back then for fapping. So those few minutes were very long or at least they were very long to me and finally she broke the silence and asked me some questions like what is wrong? Don't you find me attractive? And yada yada yada. I waited for a few seconds and then I gave her my answer and as long as I can remember it was something ridiculous like I would rather sacrifice the erections I would get with my future partners just to have my dick hard as fuck every time I had sex with you. That was the breaking point. That was the first moment of my NoFap journey. That is how everything started for me. That was the first moment of my NoFap journey and it was my first time of seeing things from that perspective, okay? For the first time I started seeing things from that perspective that that was exactly what I always wanted to do probably during my whole teenage years, probably even before that without knowing it. And I was able to do it, so I was really not willing to sacrifice it for like the fucking porn and for the masturbation. My adventures with that lady continued for a few more months. After that period of time, my addiction was virtually gone. It came back at me several more times later, but none of them was strong enough to drag me back into the past. I was able to handle all of them with ease. During the next years, I applied everything from tip 1 and tip 2 with a bunch of other stuff and that entirely transformed my life. So right now guys, I'll move to the last part of this article and that is something I call uniqueness of the porn addiction. Okay, I call it uniqueness of the porn addiction. I believe that the only thing which differentiates the porn and probably the alcohol from the other habit forming substances is the way how society treats them, basically the society's opinion about both of them. While the general opinion about drugs is bad or actually very very bad and while they're if not banned or illegal at least extremely difficult to get in many countries, porn on the other hand is in abundance wherever you go plus that is free bonus you've been told that drugs ruined many people's lives but you never heard that the porn actually produces identical results so just in case you want to find out more exactly what i'm talking about i highly encourage you to visit that website yourbrainonporn.com school organizations and others pretend they strive for drug-free youth but nobody says anything about the problem with porn addiction and masturbation in fact, the average people see fapping as something natural that is actually something good. We are constantly bombarded with wider versions of pornography through all sorts of media and commercials. The way they work is as a potential triggers to our psyche. When fighting your addiction to pornography, you have to more or less also fight all of those things. I believe all of those things is what makes overcoming that specific addiction a bit more challenging. And I guess the same goes to the junk food and to the cigarettes, but they're really not that exciting. So yeah guys, that was basically everything I wanted to say and read in this video. I would like to thank to all of the people who gave me positive comments under my previous NoFap video and special thanks to all of the people who told me that I inspired them. You cannot imagine how happy I was to read those comments. So yeah guys, once again I would like to thank you for watching another one of my videos. Please stay tuned for more. Have a nice one, good luck succeeding with NoFap and as always keep flexing. Those were the more fab games. Peace.